Okay, hey guys, welcome to today's market breakdown. It's currently 13 February, and we're going to start off this week by looking at some of the charts we analyzed last week, as well as looking at a couple new pairs. So let's open up Trading View on our computer, and then we're just going to obviously hit the Trading View, and then we're going to look at what we looked at last week first. Cool, we're going to open our Market Watch. All right, firstly, I'm thinking let's start off with. AUDCHF, that was a highly requested one last week. Let's see what that does. Okay, that's perfect. And then we're just going to zoom in here. So last week when we looked at AUDCHF, I said we can look at it coming back down to this level tapping into the zone and then possibly selling it all while well, buying it all the way up here or we can have it push up and then selling it from here down here but the initial intraday move that we're planning is buying it from the zone up to here and then selling it from here all the way down into this monthly level down here which is where we have another smaller zone in there so that is our initial target on G A U D C H F. i'm just going to look at what is going on on the one hour time frame to see how structure looks. Okay, we re don't really have any break of structure yet. Here we might have some internal structure, but overall, long term, we're still looking good. We have a high low here, and yet we've been making lower highs as well. So, overall, I'm still bearish on this. I'm just gonna leave the setup as it is and then just see how that is going. I'm also going to tick that off here from the checklist for today. Cool. Next up, we're going to look at Euro USD, which is also important. Cool. Euro USD, I haven't taken any trades on as yet. We have an old supplies in here that got broken. I'm actually going to just settings and then extend to the right just kind of delete that we can extend it a bit down to here that's where it got broken and then let's see what we're looking at on euro usd currently on the daily nothing much really we are looking to break structure around this area let's go into four hours and see what that does okay so on four hours we can see we have a nice little break of structure here forming a new supply zone so i'm just going to mark that out we now have an untapped zone all the way here cool and then what we have here as well is a little zone it seems mark has already tapped back into it and is dropping down to break structure here so i'm going to leave that as is that means possible euro usd short will be from around say the middle of this level and then once we actually go back and zoom out, we can look at maybe this demand zone all the way down here for a long term swing trade. That's going to be a 1 to 12. It seems pretty good. Okay, let me just zoom in a bit. Let's see what's happening on the one hour as well. Okay, we have an internal break of structure here. Almost, 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 not completely, but almost. We also have breakage of structure there with a one hour supply zone here. So you can also look to short from here, maybe for like a smaller intraday move. Uh, let's see if we plan a short, we can do something like maybe something like this. And then we can just target maybe we'll see what happens here. If we have any zones forming wherever this demand zone forms, I'm just going to put it for here for now. So now we kind of have two intraday moves which can be taken obviously short moves euro usd that is it for now nothing major that i'm going to look at and i'll just pretty much wait and see how the market plays out euro usd is done then we're going to look at euro swiss franc as well today we were asked to look at that euro chf
Cool. Euro use ECHF. Let's go out to the monthly. I want to see what's going on here. <clears throat> okay. Monthly Euro CHF seems very, very bullish. Well, bearish. My bad. Uh, we also have whatever happened here, which was not good. That's in 2015. We have a nice low there. Market was right back at it. I'm just going to mark that low out to keep it there for interest sake. And then we can go and see what happened on smaller time frames as well. Monthly, we have supply zones up here, which means if market is in a phase where it's turning around, you have very high targets that you can swing. Move out my way. I'm just gonna analyze that. And then let's see what happens here. We have some moves, internal moves coming back. So that little zone out there has been retested. Let's see how hard that wick is. Yeah, perfectly retested wick wick dropping down on a monthly level. Now we can see we have some lows formed here by these wicks, but you can see this price is clearly, it's clearly a strong price. It bounced off of it back in 2015. It is now right back at it. We have another monthly supply zone here, which can be your TP1 if you're looking to swing this out for months. Cool. Now, remember, in order for us to actually look at buying on a monthly scale, we need to break this monthly level, violate it, come back for retest. But we're going to go down into the weekly and the daily and the four hour and one hour and look at maybe some possible intraday moves. Load. Okay, we can see on the weekly push below market pushed right back up and it currently made a higher high here from that breakage there. Also broke structure there, which is beautiful. Not yet a weekly demand, but we can see market is starting to push around here. We also have a zone within a zone. So we have very, very strong supply here. What does that mean, guys? It means monthly we're looking at something like this to maybe come tap back into some untested zones that is a one two two almost one two three so i will then just scale this entry maybe to like half of the zone as well make that a 1.5 makes it a little bit more worth it and then from the weekly let's go into daily i'm going to see what happens here Okay, on the daily, we've got some moves that were made. Cool. Now, as you can see here, we have a daily supply zone, which is here. That is perfect. Do that. And then let's zoom all the way out. I want to just extend this to the right so we can see where target can be. I will then move that to just above that zone. And we can move this down to just be, get a bit better of an entry. Well, maybe a bit earlier of an entry, but an entry nonetheless. Still keeping us at a, what is that? One to 4.8. That is perfectly decent. Cool. As you can see here, market pushed up, broke structure there, broke structure here, there, there. And internally made this little pattern. Also, broke structure is pushing up. Now, if we were going to look at maybe a small intraday buy move, this is on the daily. We have a little daily demand zone here. Let me just make that perfect for you guys. Cool, that seems really relevant. And then I'm also just gonna mark out a little supply zone that we have here. This does seem like a really good buy. I'm just gonna plot a possible long position like this. Just nice and below there. And then something just up like up to here. That's a nice one, two, six move. And then let us save this. Now let me save it as a picture and then I'll share it with you guys on the Discord as well. Desktop. Save. Cool. So let me just go into Discord and then I'm just going to say.
possible possible your chf move coming up busy forming there we go and then i will look at these analysis of you guys a bit later perfect so let's continue with euro chf i'm going to go down into the four hours we're going to see market is starting to slow down a bit which is always a good sign that looks pretty decent actually we do not have a zone within a zone so let us see we haven't really broken structure yet we've made a lower low lower high lower high as well here and let's go from four hours into one hours or the one hour time frame we also have a little supply up there which doesn't seem too bad okay now we can see here we have made mm, that's a double top that's okay i'm gonna pretty much just say place a buy limit around this area although market has kind of tapped it already i'm just gonna say do this and then i will place my limits after the video is uploaded let's look at yeah that is fine i'm just gonna reset that perfect okay euro chf is done we have a possible buy setup on that that i have shared with you guys so you can obviously just go in manage that and then we can see how this plays out euro chf is done now we are going to look at gbp jpy is it here so let's see if gbp jpy is in here there we go gbp jpy okay gbp jpy currently still running very nicely looks to be starting to push to break structure here i believe the setup was shared two weeks ago three weeks ago but let's go out and see what's happening because i don't think anyone has any of these trades running let's go out to the weekly yeah no this i don't think anyone has this running anymore so i'm going to clear gbp jpy and then we can all do this from scratch okay let's look at the patterns here we have a nice little consolidation area we've got a break of structure there no demand zone and then we also have a clear break of structure down here this is weekly let us see no clear demand zones this has already been tapped into that's pretty perfect daily in what well, weekly into daily now let's look for some intraday moves on GBP JPY as well. Okay, looking right at this, I can immediately see we have a little break of structure right here caused by this supply zone. So I will mark that out. Okay, what else? We have demand zone here tapped into, which has caused that little break of structure. So that is a violated demand zone we also have a nice little target here so if you guys were looking to sell down i would possibly just draw a horizontal line like that because on smaller time frames we'll go have a look what that was right now i'm going to say untapped supply zone market should come back and could possibly give us a little sell this is on the daily so i'm just going to plot this right now maybe something just like that and then we can put a tp right down here let's let's do it a nice one to ten keep it even one to ten point nine cool i will share this with you guys as well desktop and that is perfect and then we're going to go in here and then say gbp jpy jpy possible setup daily now you guys can also see how i do this whole workflow thing as a go through you can see what i see and obviously just see how i share it with you all as well cool now from the daily let's go into four hours i want to get some clearer zones here for possible like tp1 tp2 type thing okay here we have a nice little four hour demand zone well we have a nice four hour demand zone here And do that yeah that is almost perfect i'm just going to extend it a little bit so i can see to make that perfect 
So this can obviously be a TP1. And then obviously when market comes back down to this, it can also be a shorter intraday buy move. So market's about to break this. If it, if it, if it closes, we've got a break of structure. We have a really small supply zone up here. Um, so let me mark that out for you guys as well. I'm going to do this one up here. We have one up here. And then we have one just down here as well, pushing down from this level. Yeah, I'm going to ignore this one. This is a really small one. It's most probably going to go up to the bigger one. So let's us plot this cell as well. Just do something like that. Make that nice and small, just above there. And then TP back down here. Now, obviously, remember, longer term move does look to be going bullish to the top zone and then bearish further down. But I'm going to share this as well. And then let's me let me save this. Cool. And then yet again, I'm going to go here. GBP, JPY. I believe that is the four hour one. GBP, JPY, four hour possible setup. Cool. Let's get back into this. So that's when we look at a GBP, JPY. I know you guys might be seeing like a smaller zone here. It's most probably going to come up back to this bigger one. We can also see here's a big zone that was tapped. And then, yeah, you are right. Let me delete that. I'm going to delete this as well because this zone was tapped. Excuse me. So I will then look at the zone right here. I'm just going to make that small. Boom. And then TP up here. And then just share that with you guys. GBP, JPY. Yeah, it's perfect. Boom. Okay, GBP, JPY. I am happy with that. I'm done with that. This one hour demand, you can just mark as a, let me, let me just, you can mark this as a possible like TP1 because your zone will start here. Don't give me that. So if you have to draw demands on it, it would start here, but you can mark that as a TP1 if you were going to take this intraday trade. Personally, I would just let it run to see it come back down to this structure here that's also untested. And that also cuts off GBP, JPY. Let's have a look at US 30 and NASDAQ. I know you guys are screaming for those as well. Now we're going to auto this and then I'm going to go out to the weekly on US 30. I don't even remember when's the last time I traded US 30. Very, very long time ago. Yeah, October. So let's clear US 30 out. Let's see what is happening here in terms of structure. So we've got nice lower lows forming, nice higher lows. We've got a little break there, but then we've also got a break all the way down here. So I'm going to mark this. I'm just going to mark these highs and lows. Mark that there. Because then I know we're kind of looking at a break of structure here. But we also have these untapped areas down here. So I'm just going to mark this range out for me. Because right, right now this is what we're going to be working in between. You can take a trend line and then just possibly drag those down. Let's see something like this. Cool. Perfect. Because we are busy breaking. Yeah, you can see we clearly broke there as well. I'm just going to see what's happening within this range. So because we broke the structure, that also means because we broke the structure, that also means that somewhere in this push that has now broken structure, there has to be untapped demand zones that we can look at. 
for the market to come back down to because right now what it does is it's looking like it broke down that trend so it kind of like broke out and then bounced off of it and then this is where most people would buy but also if you just look at these if you just look at this down here on a smaller time frame that'll be a high and that'll be a lower high this will be a higher well a higher low but then these will all be equal and in terms of structure look at this like that little wick will be like a equal high but that will be a lower high but that will also be a high low high low high low equal low so you can kind of see it consolidating forming what can be like a little pennant but that's what we're going to look at right now so this is on the weekly i've marked out just this little range that i want us to look at and then let's go down into the daily i want to see what is happening here okay daily look at this massive week this was news or something so we know in terms of anything news related happening this week we can we can see some volatility taking place okay let's look at where the structure broke we have a nice little demand zone all the way down here do that now what i want you guys to know you see this low that i've just marked on the weekly it's part of the range what I would do is if you were to buy from this zone, I wouldn't put our stop loss on this line. I'd maybe put it a little bit lower than that line just to give it a bit of breathing room in case there's any news or any volatility uh, happening in that time frame. We also have, this is daily, we also have a zone up here. Well, from here is where the push came. Got a little retracement. We have a little buy zone here up as well, or well, demand zone. So I'm just going to draw that out like that. And then also you can see something similar happening here. So we have a couple of zones, which I do believe US City has to come back into now. What I would say is because it broke out of that long-term trend, our most probable like demand zone for it to come and bounce back off of would be something internal here. If I just extend this out for you. Just like that. Now, the reason I'm saying that is because if you look at this, it was already tapped into it, right? So you could have taken a buy trade here and maybe targeted one of these highs. And you would be kind of running in profit. But you can kind of see the market is it's now starting to do this little pivot thing. So I wouldn't be surprised if we get something similar to like a little bullish pennant or continuation pattern. But then instead of it pushing and breaking straight up, it'll actually come back down to tap one of these like uh, demand zones right here. It might be in line with this line. It might be right down here. I wouldn't be surprised if you see a nice pivotal move happening like this and then either tapping off of this one and going or either coming back down to around this area. So that will be something in the lines of this. Let me take a brush. So if we see a move like this happening, it's now coming and we got to see something like this and then breaking again or we can see a move happening like this. Does that make sense? Now, I know there's a lot of you here that like to use Fibonacci. So let me let me show you what we would have done if we were to use Fibonacci, which I do not like using, but we can actually just look at it. Where is Fibonacci? Here is Fibonacci. So I think my Fibonacci might be set up in a custom way, but we're going to look at this. I'm going to do the, the bottom of this to the top of that. Now, I don't like using Fibonacci, but... For those that do like to use it, you can clearly see where is this demand zone that I just said we might come back to. It is right around this 78.6% mark. So I know all of you like buying from 61.8 or 78.6. Cool. Makes sense. All I want to show you is you don't need Fibonacci for that because you can clearly see if you just look at where these zones are, they fall perfectly in line with that kind of retracement. So you don't need to use Fibonacci. You can use it as confluence on this, but this is what I'm seeing for us just based off of the daily and this range that we're working in. We do have untapped zones here, so we might get a bounce from here and then TP's up here or a bounce from down here and then, you know, start targeting some internal supply. But yet again, these zones do have to get tested at one point. Now, we have a lot of demand zones here. This one is retested, so I'm just going to delete that. We don't have any supplies here that I'm seeing right now. I will, however go from the daily into the four hour cool 
Now let's look what we have happening here. We have a little break of, no, we don't have a break of structure yet because it has only wicked, it has not closed. What do we have here? We have a little supply which market has seen to tapped into. Uh, let me draw the zone like this. I'm just going to zoom in, make sure that is nice and accurate. So market has tapped it with a wick on the four hour. However, I'm not yet convinced that we're going to sell it down because it's only been wicked. It hasn't actually driven up to that point yet. Now, this could be a nice little, little fake out here that the market is doing. I will just watch it. We also have a nice one hour demand zone here. For a target. So right now, what it would say is I would like to see US 30 come up to like in this zone right around here and then just give me a nice sell. I'm going to give it a little bit of headroom because this is a really small supply zone and then I would just do something like this. Giving you a nice one to 12. I'm also going to share this with you guys because I know some of you want US 30 and we can also see what's going to happen tomorrow because tomorrow is CPI. So we can just have a look at what happens. We might see market actually push up till tomorrow and then during the news event, maybe spike up, catch some entries here and then crash all the way down or the complete opposite. But we all obviously just watch it out. So I'm going to share that right here. Look at US 30. US 30 possible setup. Cool. I'm going to leave US 30 on the four hour as it is for now. Let's maybe just have a quick look at one hour. I'm going to do an auto on this. And we can clearly see some great structure being break broken up here. You can see some stuff happening down here. I think you guys can pretty much just watch this and then go plot these. I'm going to look at the higher time frame moves for now. That is ideally what I want to catch. Even though it's a bit longer trading or a bit longer trades, they have to run a bit longer. They usually turn out to be the most profitable as well. Now, just remember that we are giving US City a little bit of headroom up there for that sell as well. We also did break structure as you can see on four hours and one hour. So it is also possible that we push all the way down to this demand zone here and then buy it from there back up to that little demands and that is well supplies and that is also untapped or untested. So just keep that in mind. Gonna mark off US City here. The last one we're going to look at is NASDAQ and then we're going to go into some VIX pairs for us. Okay, we had a little bit of a technical issue after I recorded US City, I went over talking to about NASDAQ and then the VIX pairs. But yeah, the camera just never switched back to the screen. So I'm going to cut the video off here. I will do an extensive video on VIX next week. Now we are currently running a VIX 75 sell in profit. VIX 100, pretty much what I said is we are still in a downtrend. Um, we have no clear break of structure on four hour, one hour yet. So what I would do is and what I would suggest is you pretty much just mark the supply zones as it keeps on breaking structure going down. As it comes up, you have some untapped zones that you can look to sell from further. Or if you get internal structure breakages, you can then obviously mark demand zones as well to buy it back up to those supply, supply zones. And then one pair I want to talk to you guys about is VIX 300 1S. So VIX 300 brackets 1S. That is a pair that is really nice to trade and I've traded it with a 40 cent account. The lot sizes look huge, but the pair is so cheap that you can literally trade with small accounts and just grow it. So if you want to look at growing small accounts and not necessarily trade something like VIX 50, VIX 25, or even VIX 75 and VIX 100, which are quite volatile, look at trading VIX 300 1S. It follows market structure really, really well. It's a really good pair to look at um, to grow small accounts. Yet again, VIX 75 sells running beautifully. I see there's someone in the group who's now flipped $1 to like 11. Just close your trade, take your money, like, don't be greedy. Um, but yeah, guys, that's been the market recap for this week. I'm sorry we couldn't get to cover NASDAQ and US, well, NASDAQ and VIX in this video. I did actually do it, but the screen sharing just never came back, and you only see me talking, so I can't put that in the video. I will catch you in next week's market breakdown. Peace.